Intel's GPUs unveiled and pricing details. Steam might be coming to a car near you and other things to talk about. In today's episode of Hot News, I'm your Brett host. We're going to be getting into the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's first topic is going to be all of the details that Intel decided to deuge us with over on Friday with regards to their GPUs, plus a little bit extra stuff that maybe they didn't want to come out, like the pricing structure on their GPU. So we'll get into that in a second, but let's talk about the things that Intel officially put out. So we have pictures and and kind of some preliminary benchmarks of their more mid-tier Arc A750 GPU, giving us benchmarks in five games. They put out a full video over on their own YouTube channel detailing this, but also releasing this chart, showing its performance comparative to the RTX 3060. In modern games, five games, uh, it beats the 3060. Obviously, this doesn't talk about any extra elements like DLSS or ray tracing, or if this is actually gonna apply to a broad range of games and not just these five that they've cherry picked, but it's at least a decent start to have. Also being unveiled on Friday was the A770 kind of flagship GPU that they're unveiling with the card getting showed off during the WAN show over on Linus's channel. Linus said that he should have a video coming out with them soon because they did do some testing with it. Not a ton, not a ton of technical analysis going into it, but this has an RGB strip right here. There's also RGB that's kind of recessed into the fans back here. Line is saying it looks really good when it actually is turned on and is very sleek and minimalistic and beautiful, which I agree. I actually really like the design on the limited edition card, but you can see the box for that there as well. Also, Intel debunking the appearance of an a780 card. It was rumored at one point that the a770 wasn't going to be the top tier one. Ryan Shrout over at Intel indicating that, yeah, the a770 is going to be as high as it gets. But how high is that? What's the performance? Where is Intel really thinking the A770 is gonna compete? How much are they gonna charge for it? How much power is it gonna consume? What are the real details? Well, I don't have release dates for you, but we do have at least a slide that came from a partner demonstration that Intel was giving to people in Taiwan. And we have some details of where Intel thinks their cards are gonna stack up comparative to the rest of the competition. Now, we already know a couple of things. The A380 has been out in the retail market over in China, and Intel's a little suggestive with this that they're getting really close to the 1650 in performance. It's more like a 1050 Ti, but the pricing is right about there. That does seem to be appropriate. They're also skipping this kind of mainstream market right here, and the A580, they're expecting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the RTX 3050 and be roughly in that two to $300 price point. The A750 and a770, the higher tier ones that Intel's coming out with, they're expecting to compete with the 3060 and 3060 Ti and come in that $300 to $400 price point and consume more power than the competition. So a bit more expensive, uh, hopefully as competitive and uh, just a bit more power consuming. Not a great start, to be quite honest. I mean, I really like the design. I'm excited to get my hands on it, but given Intel's struggle with drivers, given Intel's struggle with having availability and even launching the cards appropriately and hitting their Q1 deadlines and the GPUs that were supposed to come out in laptops that only ended up ever getting released in Korea, then China, and maybe one day we'll have a broad release in America. Um, I'm kind of more excited for Gen 2. This does feel to be a rocky launch for Intel's Arc Alchemist setup. I'm excited by it. I'm glad to see a third party enter into the GPU arena. This is not a clear cut win for Intel. This is not an environment where I see them being an obvious choice in any regard. Maybe they'll win in availability. <laughs> Maybe they'll win when it comes to just 
people giving them a shot. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think after seeing their own benchmarks, after seeing the GPU showed off on the WAN show, after seeing this slide talking about where they expect themselves to compete and the pricing, what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think of Intel's new GPU lineup down below in the comments. But we also have some future stuff from AMD, the Ryzen 7000 series showing up in benchmarks. Nothing super special, it's just here's a Ryzen 7000 chip right there. That's it's it's being tested, which is makes sense. If it's coming out later this year, we're going to start to see this pop up all around the Internet. But what needs to be popping up more and more, what I am so excited for is Toolist M.2 installation on motherboards. We've been seeing these implemented on Intel motherboards from the likes of Asus and MSI, but now MSI is committing that they're gonna be putting this on their X670 and B650 motherboards, which is good for everybody. It's just a little swivel thing to make it so that you can latch the M.2 down. Fun fact, I actually took this off of my MSI Z690 motherboard and put it on my Steam deck because I was swapping the SSD out so much. In fact, we actually did a video where we turned the Steam Deck into a full PC. And afterwards, I was like, the slowest part of this is uninstalling and reinstalling the M.2. So I just got the little flip. I put it on there and now it's so much faster. It makes so much sense to just have this instead of fiddling diddling with a little screw. I love it. I want to see it on every motherboard. Please more. And I can hear you through the screen telling me, please more crypto stonks. So let's discuss the crypto price in Bitcoin. Not doing much. It's 28.46, down 1.5 percent. Ethereum, roughly the same, 13.45, and Dogecoin down 1 percent to be at 6.3 cents. Not a ton of movement in the market, but Reese has moved his butt from his parents' house back to his apartment, and hopefully he has more electricity because he's back in Pretoria and not in the middle of nowhere. And I uh, just want UFT deals, man. Do you have them? Hey friends, Reese here, finally back in Pretoria. Hopefully it means less power cuts and more deals. First up, we have the Corsair K60 RGB Pro Low Profile Mechanical Gaming Keyboard with Cherry MX Low Profile Speed switches going for only $44.88, which is currently 59% off. And if you'd like to expand on that, the Elgato Stream Deck Mark II, which is currently going for $124.99, which is currently $25 off for the new 15 key version with the hot swappable face place. You can find today's deals and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. Hopefully. I didn't just segue to nothing again, but I'm gonna do a nothing segue to talk about Tesla and the fact that they are looking to implement Steam into their vehicles. Yes, my friends, in case you wanna play video games in your car, well, Tesla might be the way to do that. So this happening in a tweet interaction where somebody said, did you know that Tesla is a gaming console? My kids love the amazing games on Tesla because they have arcade games. They also have uh, Cuphead, stuff that you can play while you're charging the vehicle. They're not available while you're actually driving the vehicle. Elon Musk replying that they're making progress with Steam integration. Demo probably next month, potentially during their investor call. This is after Tesla has actually been hiring for game developers to help port games over to their stuff. I would be like super happy if it was like somehow a VM of SteamOS built into what Tesla has in their own operating system, because I, I'm not going to do the research on this, but I presume Tesla's running some custom Linux setup on their cars. So just just that that would be the issue is getting Linux running. But if Valve's already putting in the work to get games running on Steam via Proton and SteamOS, just just let it like you can boot up SteamOS 3. I would love that. I would almost consider buying a new car for that. It's only available in the Model S and the Model X right now, which uh, ruins my excitement at that because those are very pricey vehicles at the moment, but they do have a Navi 23 APU, which according to this chart is actually pretty comparable to something like the PlayStation 5 at 10 teraflops, a little less than the Series X, but definitely more than the Series S, a solid gaming console being presented in the vehicle. Uh, they say it starts at the MSRP of 80,000. I believe the Model S is a bit more expensive than that to start at this point. Yeah, the Model S is starting at $105,000 and the Model X is starting at like 120. Yep, it's at 120. And I've talked about this before, like the Model X is the perfect vehicle for my family because of my disabled son being able to get in and out of the vehicle, having the doors go above my six foot two head and not having to duck or hunch or do anything where I have to weirdly contort my body and pick up a 50 to 60 pound human and put him in his seat. I, I, I love the Model X for that. 
I can't justify that much money. Who? Not me. However, there are some reports out there that the Model Ys in China actually have this Ryzen APU baked into those. Potentially, this may follow in the US. It's hard to say whether or not that's actually gonna happen. There's been talks about Tesla updating their MCUs to actually have Ryzen chips in their upcoming vehicles, which would mean their more affordable Model 3, which costs, I believe, 48,000 to start, would then be a gaming console. And that's obviously a small price to pay, especially when you compare it to something like an Xbox PlayStation 5, because they're thousands of dollars. Yeah, $47,000, that's... Jump change. Oh, fun fact, in case you haven't been paying attention to vehicle inflation, the new vehicle average transaction price is $47,148. So that Model 3 is actually under the average. I don't wanna talk about this anymore. It makes my money head hurt. Am I just not average? Where are people getting all of this cash? I don't know. I don't even know where Elon Musk got $44 billion to attempt his acquisition of Twitter that has fallen through, but Twitter is now trying to push through in the court of Delaware. There is now a hearing scheduled for July 19th. They're going to sit before a judge where Twitter is going to try to take this to trial sometime in September in order to move forward on the specific performance clause, which should actually force Elon Musk to purchase it. Elon Musk saying that Twitter is now trying to move at warp speed with this and that they should calm down because they have a sudden request for warp speed after two months of foot dragging and obfuscation and it is its latest tactic to shroud the truth about spam accounts long enough to railroad defendants into closing. So he'll have to defend that whether or not they actually should wait until February of 2023, which is when he's indicating he wants to go to trial for this. It's tough to say which one's right, which one's wrong. Honestly, it feels like Twitter was kind of preparing for this from the very beginning beginning with how you read the contract between Elon Musk and Twitter, the very few outs they gave him, and then also making sure that they had the ability to force this transaction in case Elon Musk was going to pull out for any given reason. I don't know. I'm interested. The only people winning in this are people who love uh, giant courtroom dramas, which after the last few months appears to be the most of the American populace, and then uh, their lawyers making a hefty payday. And SSD coolers might get a hefty payday because you're likely gonna need more of them, especially as PCI Express Gen 5 comes out. Really good segue there. I feel like I'm not on a different topic at all. It's Team Group coming out with their first concept liquid cooler, which is gonna combine the CPU cooler with an SSD cooler. You plop them both on, they're connected via the tubes, one pump, all of that good stuff, cooling down your SSDs in case you need that. And in case you need the next gen GPUs from AMD, there's new reports coming out from Lee about the rough performance price comparativeness that we're expecting. The 7600 XT mid-tier GPU is expected to come in at less than $400, and NVIDIA's mid-tier of the 4070 looking to come in at less than $500 and be roughly directly comparative to one another. Although, is that kind of uh, sort of the way it is right now? And about what the price is, according to the benchmarks that we've seen, it might actually be better for the consumer, much faster graphics cards. But what's not going to be as cheap is Intel stuff. There's new reports coming out from Intel talking to the people who they need to about the fact that they're going to be raising the prices on their chips between 10 and 20 percent in the next coming year. Intel indicated it would increase pricing in certain segments of its business due to inflationary pressures. The company has begun to inform customers of these changes, essentially going with their Xeon lineups, a lot more of the data center stuff. It's hard to say how much that's going to impact the gamers with their Intel core series lineup that most people end up purchasing, but it remains to be seen. However, one of the things that I just, I want everybody, this is just, you know, basic math 101, Brett kind of giving as much general life advice as he can. When these companies are talking about inflationary pressures for the reason to raise the prices, just keep an eye on their quarterly reports. If their costs went up and their revenues went up, but their actual profit stayed the same, cool. They probably weren't lying. If costs go up, raising prices to increase revenue, profits stay the same, that's good. If costs go up a little bit, revenues go up a lot, and the profits increase a lot, then at that point, the company is the inflationary pressure. They're charging more, which is increasing the price of things. So if they're making more profit off of the fact that they increased the cost, then the, the inflationary pressure was what they created. They made things more expensive. And it wasn't because of cost. 
lost, it was because they wanted to extract more value out of their customers. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I think it is a little deceptive when they try to pin it on other forces out there saying, it's, oh, it's them. It's them that we have to now have record profits quarters in a row. I'm excited by this. Anyways, a little bit of general life advice with Brett. The more you know. I'll see you back here for more hot tech news tomorrow, my friends. Till then.